Next power plant or power station is Narora Atomic Power Station. It is located in Narora, Uttar Pradesh. So here the type of nuclear reactors are pressurized heavy water reactors. Capacity is 220 megawatts each. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus AS. Right, today is our 35th day. Alright, so today uh, the topic for discussion is nuclear energy and the nuclear power plants. Right, this is also very important from the point of view of examination. There have been questions asked in the previous years from this topic also. Right, so not only for prelims, this topic is also important for mains also because uh, as you all know, the nuclear energy this concept is always has been a topic of controversy and uh, because uh, the safety concerns are much right because we have seen some uh, we can say nuclear power plant accidents uh, especially in former ussr and uh, we can say in japan also fukushima daiichi nuclear accident has happened when uh, tsunami occurred in japan so there Man, major consequences was there major consequences was there so there are concerns uh, taking into the uh, when we discuss about the nuclear power especially nuclear power plants so at one time when uh, we can say the solar power was not that predominant uh, many countries uh, have focused on uh, generating power through the nuclear power plants because the power is considered as cleaner i mean the nuclear power pl plants they are considered i mean the energy produced through the nuclear power plants it is considered as cleaner energy because it was not releasing pollutants like carbon dioxide etc into the environment however there are also concerns with the we can say the uh, we can say waste material uh, whatever that comes from the nuclear reactors because that waste whatever remains after the production of energy that uh, uh, waste is a radioactive waste so radioactive waste so disposal of this waste radioactive material was still is still a problem we could not find out a permanent so permanent solution for disposing this waste material uh, so still there are a lot of uh, apprehensions and concerns about the nuclear energy however uh, for the developing countries like uh, developing countries like india so i mean it still holds promise the nuclear energy because we need lot of energy for the growing population uh, to i mean as we are developing we can say the standards of our development we need we need lot of energy so dependence on the nuclear energy becomes compulsory for countries like india and uh, uh, india also still expo exploring the uh, we can say production of nuclear energy however so after uh, all these aspects like nuclear nuclear accidents and also concerns with the nuclear energy developed countries like germany etc so germany was producing lot of energy major component of energy from the nuclear we can say power plants so taking on to the concerns it is slightly ready i mean it is gradually gradually we can say closing down the nuclear reactors and it is focusing more and more on the we can say uh, uh, renewable energy sources like solar energy and also it is focusing on gas based energy right still we can say the nuclear energy holds a lot of relevance uh, in the world because there are many developing countries they do need uh, we can say cleaner methods of energy production and the nuclear energy comes into comes into the category of cleaner fuels fuels when compared to fuels like coal etc right now we will understand the historical development of nuclear energy or nuclear power plants in india so basically initial in the initial phases uh, we can say uh, baba homi j baba he can be considered as the father of nuclear energy in india 
in india because he has started the uh, research on the we can say research on the nuclear energy or for that matter uh, for that matter nuclear uh, we can say nuclear material right so in 1948 just immediately after the independence the atomic energy commission has been established it laid the foundation for india's nuclear program similarly after uh, i mean in 1950s india's first nuclear reactor it is a small we can say test reactor apsara so it went critical going critical means the uh, we can say the nuclear reactor it is operating at, at its we can say highest capacity highest designated we can say capacity then it is known as the particular nuclear reactor has went has gone critical right so it went critical during 1950s beginning the uh, indigenous nuclear research and development right similarly india followed the atoms for peace agenda during 1990s, 90s during 1950s and 60s so it is initially pursued nuclear technology for peaceful purposes peaceful purposes means generation of nuclear energy and also using for uh, we can say using nuclear uh, we can say energy in medicinal purposes for medicinal purposes etc so that particular we can say agenda is called as atoms for peace program right right so next uh, TIFR Tata Institute for Fundamental Research it has been established and also the Baba Atomic Research Center BARC has established in the memory of uh, Homi J Baba right after that so due to many geopolitical developments we can say India had to test its fact I mean first a nuclear test has been conducted uh, by India that uh, particular test has been codenamed as laughing buddha in may i mean the particular test has been conducted in may 1974 in the pokhram so here we have through this test we have achieved the nuclear we can say nuclear or atomic bomb right right so it is it has been conducted due to the uh political uh, geopolitical changes so threats from pakistan were increasing and also china threats from these two countries were uh, increasing uh so india had to face uh, enemies at the two borders in the western border and also the north and the northeastern border so to face the challenges india has to do the first nuclear test and through that it acquired the capacity of atom bomb right uh this i mean india named this as peaceful nuclear explosion that marked india's entry into nuclear club so in yesterday's uh, class we have understood what are the countries that have the capacity of atomic bomb or nuclear bomb uh so india ha- has also entered into that nuclear club and understood its capacity to harness nuclear energy for strategic and also civilian purposes similarly one more historic event is civil uh, civil nuclear deal with uh, united states of america in 2008 so in yesterday's class also we have understood that india is not a, not yet a member in nsg nuclear suppliers group which controls actually controls the supply of nuclear material right however when usa we india has concluded this civil nuclear deal with united states of america so the i mean india's intro entry uh, into the club of accessing nuclear materials this has been we can say facilitated right so this particular agreement has been signed in 2008 so it can we can say it is a significant milestone in the uh, nuclear history of india so this particular agreement it granted india access to civil nuclear uh, technology and fuel both technology and nuclear fuel despite not being a signatory to nuclear non proliferation treaty npt so because of because india is not not a signatory of this treaty we could not membership into nsg but through the civil nuclear deal this disability has been overcome right it opened avenues for international cooperation and technology transfer 
in the nuclear technology sector so basically the country uh, especially usa has realized that india is a india is a big market big market when it comes to nuclear energy and there is a lot of scope for building nuclear reactors in india so in that way united states of america also wanted to profit by supplying the we can say by supplying the equipment for nucle- these nuclear power plants so uh, i mean that is also one of the motive why in uh, united states of america has signed the particular deal with india and also india has impeccable track record impeccable track record when it comes to peaceful use of nuclear energy so because of this impeccable uh, record of india also when it comes to peaceful use of nuclear energy usa has been convinced to sign a deal nu- uh, civil nuclear cooperation agreement with india right so this is some historical background about india india's nuclear journey we can say now we will understand the nuclear power plants that are existing in india and uh, which are operational right so there are seven <coughs> we can say eight uh, nuclear power plants that are operational now so those power plants are first one is tarapur atomic power station it is located in tarapur maharashtra the types are boiling water reactors the type of reactors placed here are boiling water reactors so this capacity tarapur 1 and 2 it is 160 megawatt uh, capacity they have 160 megawatt capacity and the 3 and 4 they have 540 megawatt capacity so remember basically you remember the name of the power plant and uh, its respective location along with the state right so tarapur atomic power station it is located in tarapur maharashtra next one is kaiga nuclear power plant it is located in Kai- kaiga karnataka so reactors placed here are pressurized heavy water reactors capacities are 220 megawatt each so basically <coughs> four uh, uh, pressurized uh, heavy water reactors are placed here next one is kakrapar atomic power station it is located in kakrapar gujarat so two uh, pressurized heavy water we can say reactors are placed here uh, 220 megawatt each right so basically most of the reactors that are uh, right now functioning in india are pressurized heavy water reactors only pressurized heavy water reactors so basically india follows a three stage nuclear power program we will understand that later so these pressurized heavy water reactors comprise the first stage first stage in the three stage nuclear power program of india so most of the uh, nuclear reactors till now installed and functioning functioning are these reactors only pressurized heavy water reactors all right next reactors uh, next uh, power station we can say nuclear power station rajasthan atomic power station it is located in rawatbatha rajasthan so several units including pressurized heavy water reactors right in ca- it consists of uh pressurized it also consists of pressurized heavy water reactors right so basically the some of the, here some of the units are functional they are operational in status while some other units are uh under maintenance i mean they are undergoing maintenance next one is next nuclear plant is kudankulam nuclear power plant right udankulam tamil nadu basically they are constructed with the help of russia right so they are constructed with the help of russia so so here 1000 megawatt pressurized water uh, reactors they are called as bver so they they are placed uh, two units are placed here with 1000 megawatt capacity each so particular that particular reactors are called as bver 1000 pressurized water reactors right so there there is a proposal for uh, increasing the additional units in the in this particular place kudankulam so basically during the early early years of 2000 so early decades uh, early early years of 2000s there is a proposal of adding more units here more units here 
however there have been lot of protest and uh, one particular organization involved here is greenpeace so uh, under the bannership of greenpeace so people have protested uh, against the we can say uh, increasing the capacity or adding more more units in kudamkulam so uh, for the time being that proposal of increasing the units there has been put on hold right so units 1 and 2 are operational with construction going on for other units but there are lot of we can say protests are have gone so temporarily that the construction has been put on hold next power plant or power station is narora atomic power station it is located in narora uttar pradesh so here the type of nuclear reactors are pressurized heavy water reactors capacity is 220 megawatts each next is madras atomic power station so it is located in kalpakkam tamil nadu so you can say two different nuclear power stations are there in tamil nadu kudamkulam and also kalpakkam so this particular atomic power station madras atomic power station it is located in kalpakkam tamil nadu All right <coughs> so here two units of pressurized heavy water reactors are present along with that a prototype prototype means small which is a research uh, we can say research uh, a reactor built for doing research so fast breeder reactor has been placed here so fast breeder reactor is the second stage in our three stage nuclear power generation program so it is the fast breeder reactor is the second stage we will understand the three stages what are the three stages so first stage comes pressurized heavy water uh he pressurized heavy water reactor second stage is fast bre fast breeder reactor so basically a prototype of fast breeder reactor has been placed here so capacity is vary across units next the last one is tarapur atomic power station 3 and 4 stages expansion so it is also it is located in tarapur maharashtra here also the pressurized heavy water reactors are placed right so capacity is 7000 megawatt so it is under construction right so you should be thorough with the locations of various power plants there may be a question uh, in the examination there can be a questions like uh, name of the power plant and uh, the respected respected type of reactor or we can say state so in in which state that particular reactor has been located so there may be a question like this in the examination so apart from uh, the uh, under process or we can say the working nuclear power plants there have been several several proposals to build build new power plants new power plants in india however we can say the, i mean it is a controversial issue lot of controversial issue because uh one the nuclear power plants they need a lot of area and uh, some people have to be uh displaced from there they have to be moved to other places and also there are lot of environmental concerns environmental concerns we can say there are many opponents uh those who are opposing the nuclear energy they want that the we can say other alternatives have to be approached like nuclear in as a solar energy etc so there is a big group uh, at the world level also they are not in favor of nuclear energy because the we can say the technology involved is kind of dangerous so if at all we can say accident occurs nuclear act nuclear accident occurs it will have lot of uh, big repercussions so that is one case and also there are many other concerns like if people are uh, we can say exposed to uh, radiation radiation the consequences are very very severe so because of all these reasons everywhere in all the locations which we are going to study there are lot of protest going on against the construction of these particular power plants however we will look into the locations where the proposals have been there about uh, we can say building the nuclear power plants first location is jaitapur uh, nuclear power plant it is uh, location is in maharashtra so here up epr european pressurized heavy water reactors they are proposed to be built here each one sorry total capacity of the proposed we can say power plant is 9900 uh, megawatts 
so it is uh, uh, under we can say at the proposal uh, stage so here the collaboration here uh, france is being collaborated uh, to build these power plants means france is uh, supplying the technology and the equipment and it is actively supporting the building of jaitapur nuclear power plant so basically the company uh, involved here is areva areva company was involved in building of these uh, we can say proposed to build this epr uh, european pressurized reactors however this company went bankrupt 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 some uh, four years back four to five years back now so there is i mean we are not sure whether this project will go further or not however when the proposal was active proposal was active there there is a lot of protest there was lot of protest against this power plant next is mithividhi nuclear power project it is uh, i mean the state where it was proposed to be located is gujarat so the type of reactor is westinghouse ap1000 total capacity is 6000 megawatt so six uh, we can say units are have been proposed to be installed here so <coughs> under progress uncertain progress due to various issues so basically usa usa was supposed to build this uh, we can say uh, nuclear power project next is chutka nuclear power plant Madhya Pradesh was the state where it was supposed to be located. Here, PHWRs, pressurized heavy water reactor, were were supposed to be placed here. Uh, planned and developed by NPCL. I mean, India. I mean, Indian government was itself was uh, trying to we can say install these reactors. So each capacity. I mean, total capacity was one thousand four hundred and mega megawatts. right next is kobada nuclear power project it is uh, supposed to be located in andhra pradesh the coastal andhra pradesh we can say kobada the place where the nuclear uh, reactors were supposed to be installed so here the type of reactors uh, supposed to be installed are ge hitachi economic simplified boiler water reactors they are technically known as uh, esw esb wrs so the total capacity is of 6600 megawatt so phased delays and uncertainty is due to same uh, we can say protest so basically japan was supposed to help and build this particular reactor next is uh, gorakhpur haryana anu vidyut pariyojana it was i mean the uh, respected state where the uh, we can say reactor was supposed to be built is haryana here pressurized heavy water reactor were supposed to be built so here total capacity is of 2800 megawatt right so here gh avp 1 and 2 are under construction and 3 and 4 are proposed to be built right so these are the some of the proposals we can say where nuclear power plant plants have been supposed to be built right next now we will understand the three stage nuclear power program of india right <coughs> so basically india is blessed with one of the largest thorium supplies largest thorium supplies so to utilize this thorium we have thorium but we do not have uranium so basically the nuclear reactors they start functioning with the uranium materials only however india do not have sufficient quantities of uranium but however it has large quantities of thorium so to utilize this th thorium reserves reserves and achieve self sufficiency this particular three stage nuclear power program has been proposed so basically it has been designed by we can say homi ji baba right so the, it this particular we can say three stage program has been conceptualized with the aim of utilizing the country's abundant thorium reserves to achieve long term energy security and sustainability right so the objectives two major objectives of this three stage program are energy security by utilizing the abundant thorium reserves next is sustainability so by utilizing the thorium the plan was to achieve sustainability in energy requirement right now we will understand the stages 
the first stage is pressurized heavy water reactors right so in the first stage pressurized heavy water reactors will be built right so it uh, involves deployment of pressurized heavy water reactors fueled by they are fueled by natural uranium so you try to remember the fuel that is involved or used in every stage of the uh, we can say reactors so this is also important so basically the fuel used here in the first stage is natural uranium so here natural uranium it contains very less amount of we can say fissile material so natural uranium it consists lot of uranium 235 as you all know uranium 235 itself is not a we can say radioactive material it is a stabilized material but this natural uranium it will also have some amount of uranium 238 so basically this particular uranium 238 it is the fissile material when this atoms uranium 238 atoms they are bombarded with the we can say uh, neutrons so that particular material will release energy lot of energy uh, and they, it will also uh, become uranium 235 so this is the basically the chain reaction that is involved in the first stage so basically the fuel used here is natural uranium in which most part will be uranium 235 and some part little bit percentage 0.1 to 0.3 percentage will be fissile material that is uranium 238 when that particular material is we can say hit with the neutrons it will release lot of energy and also it will become uranium 235 Similarly, uh, it will uh, they produce electricity while generating plutonium 239 also, right? It is a byproduct uh, of uh, neutron capture process, right? Similarly, uh, plutonium 239 is also a fissile material. I mean, it can also produce energy that can sustain nuclear fission reactions and serve as fuel for subsequent stages of the program so this particular plutonium 239 that is produced as a byproduct it will serve as a fuel for the subsequent stages that means stage 2 also right next stage 2 of the uh, we can say three stage program the particular reactors are known as fast breeder reactors right so basically it they are known as the fast breeder reactor because they produce more fuel more fuel than they utilize than they utilize so basically for this reason they are known as the fast breeder reactors so here plutonium 239 that that was a byproduct in the stage one it is used as a fuel in the fast breeder reactors so they are designed to breed more fissile material such as plutonium 239 uh, right from the fertile material such as ura uranium 238 through a neutron capture process right additionally uh, these fast breeder reactors can utilize thorium as a blanket material so i have told thorium we have abundant thorium react uh, we can say material so here in the process thorium will also be introduced as a blanket material right so to breed uranium 233 another fissile material suitable for nuclear power generation so in the process of generating uh, we can say energy in the second stage so in the process thorium will also be introduced as a material as a blanket material uh, along with the we can say uh, thorium 239 so this particular thorium material then will be converted as uranium 233 and this is also is a suitable material for nuclear power generation so this particular uranium 233 generated in this process will be used as the uh, we can say fuel for 
third stage of nuclear power program right now we will see the uh, third stage here the uh, nuclear reactors that will be used are advanced heavy water reactors right so try to remember the names of types of power plants we can say nuclear plants that will be used at each stage so third stage at the third stage we will use advanced heavy water uh, reactors so the final stage program it involves deployment of advanced heavy water reactors that utilize thorium based fuel so thorium based fuel we have understood thorium will be introduced as a blanket material in the second stage so that will be converted as a fuel for the third stage so they are designed to utilize thorium 232 as a fertile material which can be converted into uranium 233 through neutron absorption and the subsequent decay so this uranium 233 it can sustain a nuclear chain reaction and serve as a fuel in these reactors thereby enabling utilization of india's vast thorium resources so in the second stage we have understood thorium that will be introduced as a blanket material in the second stage it will be converted into uranium 233 that particular material will be used as a uh, we can say used as a uh, we can say uh, fissile material here in the third stage right so this is the three stage program so it uh, this this particular stage involves i mean enables utilizing the vast thorium reserves that are there in india so that india can become a sustainable uh, india can have the capacity of producing sustainable energy right so significance of this three stage program is we can understand energy dependence so when lot uh, i mean more quantity of energy produced <coughs> we will achieve the energy independence sustainable see so basically the i mean the energy produced through the nuclear power plants it is uh, we can say it is said as we can say clean fuel it is a clean fuel so in that way we can achieve the sustainability also All right environmental benefits are also there because it is considered as clean fuel so the green uh, we can say the production of the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane etc and also dust particles dust particles and many other pollutants the release of these gases will be uh, we can say reduced or prevented so when we use the fuels like coal etc coal and other uh, sources so they are many polluting gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide similarly particulate matter and many other poisonous gases like nox etc they are released so through the utilization or when we are using the nuclear power for production of the uh, energy especially electricity these pollutants can be prevented so in this way they have environmental benefits also so this is the pictorial representation of three stage nuclear power program so here stage 1 natural uranium is the <coughs> uh, we can say fuel pressurized heavy water reactors are utilized here electricity is given here depleted uranium it will also be used in this process stage 2 right so here a uh, pu fueled fast breeder reactors are used here apart from generating electricity the plutonium generator here again will be reused as a fuel so because of that reason also it is known as a fast breeder reactor similarly whatever the thorium is introduced here so thorium is introduced here as a blanket material so because of th that thorium it thorium will be converted into uranium 233 so that will come as a, that will be used as a fuel in this stage 3 so here so advanced heavy water reactors are placed here advanced heavy water reactors are placed here so uranium 233 will be regenerated in the process again it will be used as a fuel so electricity is generated so this is the pictorial representation of the uh, we can say nuclear three stage nuclear program of india all right so thorium utilization we have seen it has lot of significance uh, significance for india because we do not have uranium all right we do not have uranium so because of this reason we have to face lot of 
uh, problems because we do not have sufficient uranium so when india has uh, done its first nuclear test india has i mean lot of we can say restrictions have been put on india a uh, lot of uh, restrictions or sanctions have been imposed on india sanctions have been imposed on india especially by the united states of america so i am in that situation it has become very very difficult for india to acquire uh, nuclear material after that the sanctions have been imposed uh, uh, i mean revoked and in 2008 uh, we could sign a civil nuclear agreement with the united states of america after that the uranium has started coming to india so the, in that effort we could utilize the thorium in the second stage and we could produce more fissile material so <clears throat> that is the significance of thorium utilization so so we have abundant thorium reserves so it is a fertile mat- material that will be converted into a fissile material uh, as uranium 239 33 in the second stage of the three stage nuclear power pro- program so advantages of thorium utilization are it has uh, we have it in abundance similarly reduced proliferation risks so that uh, we can say the cycles uh, thorium based fuel cycles p- produce fewer trans uranic uranic elements such as plutonium etc which reduces the proliferation of risks associated with nuclear weapons proliferation so basically the material used in the nuclear bombs or atani- atomic bombs is plutonium along with we can say uranium larger amounts of plutonium yeast uh, used in making the atomic bombs so in thorium based cycles fuel cycles the production of oh, plutonium is very very less so in this in this way it also reduces the proliferation of nuclear weapons similarly minimize the radioactive waste so basically thorium based reactors they generate less long lived radioactive waste so in this way the radioactive uh, radioactive waste um, the dangers can be minimized energy safety enhanced the safety so these thorium based reactors have inherent safety feature features such as passive cooling mechanisms and uh, reduced risk of severe accidents which enhances the overall uh, reactor safety so basically passive cooling mechanisms are so basically we do not need any motors to propel or supply the we can say water so that nuclear reactors will be cooled so this passive cooling mechanisms are there so whenever a accident occurs so the there is without need of any human intervention the particular core of the reactor will be cooled so further in this way further accidents will be uh, we can say prevented so this is the beauty of the thorium based fuel cycles so when uh, in japan the fukushima uh, Fuku, fukushima daiichi nuclear accident has occurred so there was the we can say the cooling system present there present was active cooling system which means the motors have to be run to cool the nuclear core so that uh, those we can say mechanisms they have been damaged uh, through the tsunami whatever tsunami has occurred so uh, in the tsunami this uh, cooling mechanisms have been damaged active cooling mechanisms were installed there they have been damaged so because of that the cooling mechanism has uh, mechanisms have been failed because of that the core of the reactor uh, also subjected to accident and the threats have been damage have been increased so in thorium based cycles there is no need for that uh, that time uh, that kind of dangers because Uh, there is a system of pa- passive cooling mechanisms in this way there is no need for human interventions the core of the reactor can be uh, cooled by the we can say default measures so that is the safety measure that is present in the thorium based reactors right similarly india is trying to garner international cooperation in building and continuing the nuclear power plants so india engaged in various collaborative partnerships so in that the milestone is civil nuclear agreement in 2008 with the united states of america right so it is basically also known as the 123 agreement right 
So this agreement enabled India to engage in civil nuclear trade and technology transfer with United States and other nuclear suppliers groups countries despite not being a signatory to the non nuclear non proliferation treaty yesterday we have understood india is also not a member of energy nuclear suppliers group because of the opposition of china however through the civil nuclear agreement of 2008 now india can engage and do business with other nuclear powered countries or the countries which have nuclear material and technology and we can utilize those uh, we can say resources and build nuclear reactors in india right similarly another feature is we can also sell this nuclear power technology to other countries so in this way we can also earn revenue right similarly international atomic energy agency so india collaborates with iaea it is a un agency united nations organizations agency it is responsible for promoting peaceful uses of nuclear energy and ensuring nuclear safety and security right right so similarly bilateral agreements so india has signed bilateral agreements with various countries for nuclear cooperation technology nuclear cooperation technology transfer and the joint research and development mechanisms so yesterday also we have understood because india is a not member of energy uh, nuclear suppliers group so if india i mean a member of the nuclear suppliers group it uh, need not conclude any bilateral agreements so with all the countries those who are members of this nuclear suppliers group it can automatically a particular can automatically do business and the transact in nuclear material and technology however uh, because india is not a member of this particular group it uh, india dependent on bilateral we can say agreements civil nuclear agreements to enable uh, we can say to access the nuclear technology and the nuclear material right so india uh, adopted the method of met- um, i mean the option of concluding bilateral agreements to overcome the we can say disability of not being a member of the nuclear suppliers group now we will uh, see the list of uh, countries uh, uh, i mean with them india has a civil nuclear cooperation agreement first country is the uh, united states of america we can say this uh, it is the one of the first countries to sign the civil nuclear cooperation agreement with with india so after that many countries have followed the suit next country is russia so various agreements for nuclear cooperation including co- collaboration on the construction of nuclear power plants like kudamkulam nuclear power plant has been made next france so jaitapur plant we have seen it is proposed to be uh, built with the help of the we can say france so there is agreement civil nuclear cooperation agreement with france and also with canada we also know canada has lot of nuclear uh, we can say uranium reserves right so we can say homi j homi j baba was able to get the initial fuel and the technology from canada only right so canada was forefront in the initial stages uh, giving the nuclear technology and nuclear fuel so with canada also we have a civil nuclear cooperation agreement similarly along with um, united kingdom also agreements for nuclear cooperation and technology transfer are signed similarly with australia actually australia has uh, earlier put a ban on supply of nuclear material and technology to india however australian parliament it has passed a resolution by uh, to lift the ban on india so up after that a civil nuclear cooperation agreement with australia has also me been made possible next kazakhstan namibia mongolia so all these countries have vast reserves of we can say Uh, uranium so nuclear civil nuclear agreements have been concluded those countries also similarly argentina japan so japan south korea japan south korea are critical in supplying the equipment equipment that is especially required for building the nuclear reactors so japan we can say it is the worst sufferer of nuclear accident first during the second world war it has to witness the atom bombs atomic bombs similarly in 2011 there was 
ఫుకుషిమా దాయిచి న్యూక్లియర్ యాక్సిడెంట్ సో వీ కెన్ సే ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది వన్ ఆఫ్ ద కంట్రీస్ విట్ హ్యా విచ్ హ్యాస్ సీన్ ది వర్స్ట్ కాన్సిక్వెన్సెస్ ఆఫ్ న్యూక్లియర్ యాక్సిడెంట్స్ సో జపాన్ వాజ్ వెహిమెంట్ అర్లియర్ వెహిమెంట్ ఇన్ సప్లైంగ్ న్యూక్లియర్ టెక్నాలజీ టు ఇండియా అవెవర్ విత్ ది హెల్ప్ అండ్ అసూరెన్సెస్ ఆఫ్ యునైటెడ్ స్టేట్స్ ఆఫ్ అమెరికా జపాన్ ఆల్సో సైన్డ్ ది న్యూక్లియర్ సివిల్ న్యూక్లియర్ కోఆపరేషన్ అగ్రిమెంట్ విత్ ది ఇండియా రైట్ similarly we have agreements with belgium sweden brazil and czech republic all these countries want to trade do we can say trade uh, i mean trade the trade about the nuclear uh, reactors and the nuclear uh, we can say nuclear material with india so because of this reason all these countries have signed civil nuclear agreements with india similarly germany also it has signed so the components or equipment provided by germany also important for india to build reactors so because of that reason an agreement has been signed with germany also all right all right so as we all understood there is i mean concern with nuclear energy is one it is a dangerous technology and the second problem is the disposal of waste waste disposal disposal of waste so this is also one other another major program so we will see now how safety measures safety safety measures can be taken to safe to safely dispose this waste material so first we will understand this safety regulations and the mechanisms mechanisms available to ensure safety regulations so in india atomic uh, atomic energy regulatory board is there it is established under uh the energy atomic energy act of 1962 so we can say when it comes to india it is the primary body which is overseeing the safety uh, safety issues of nuclear material or nuclear energy right so it is india's independent body it is responsible for overseeing nuclear safety and radiation protection licensing and authorization powers of it so aerb it, it issues licenses licenses and authorizations for construction commissioning operation and uh, decommissioning of nuclear facilities including nuclear power plants research reactors fuel facilities and radio waste management facilities right safety standards and guidelines have been established by aerb right now we will see about waste management so this is the major problem when it comes to nuclear energy and the nuclear power plants disposal of waste right so some of the options available are storage so it can be uh, short time storage so low and uh, intermittent level of radioactive waste generated during the routine operation maintenance uh, of uh, nuclear facilities it is initially stored on site in specially designed storage facilities similarly long t- long term storage facilities are there so some types of radioactive waste such as spent nuclear fuel assemblies they require long term storage before final disposal right similarly reprocessing uh, will be adopted in certain cases so india has established reprocessing facilities to e- to extract reusable materials such as plutonium and uranium from spent nuclear fuel so this is also one of the me- uh, methods of waste management next one is transmutation so india is exploring the transmutation technologies to convert long lived radioactive isotopes present in high level radioactive waste into shorter lived or stable re- isotopes through nuclear reactions similarly deep geological disposal this is also one of the options explored by india so india is developing plans for deep geological repositories to safely dispose high levels of radio waste and long lived inter, uh, long lived intermediate level waste materials so these involve emplacing waste containers in stable ge- geological formations such as deep underground repo- repositories to isolate isolate radio waste from environment for thousands of year so here this method deep geological resources so in stable we can say stable places where there are limited earthquakes so a deep gorges will be uh, dug and uh, the radioactive waste material it will be put in containers 
and it will be placed underground deep underground and that area will be covered so here the material waste material will be stored for thousands of years right so these are the some of the waste uh, disposal mechanisms that will be employed or india is working on uh, i mean employing these methods of waste disposal that is generated in the nuclear reactors right now we will see a question that is asked previously the question is recently india has signed in a deal known as action plan for prioritization and implementation of cooperation areas in nuclear field with which of the following country so basically it, the question is asked during 2019 in that time so basically it will come under international relations or in current affairs topics also so basically during that time we have concluded uh, a renewed agreement a renewed agreement with russia in the nuclear field right so you can expect these type of questions in the examination right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining in the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day right see you next time